Everybody in this town that is connected to music knew Les Sarnoff and probably knew him well. And you couldn't really go anywhere in terms of the music world here in town without somebody saying, oh, Les, hey, good to see you. It was really, and, and there was a genuine uh, respect and, and, and kinship there going both ways. And, and again, I think that's pretty rare in this business. He got up literally right after midnight to start prepping for his show. And what everybody else heard was just this laid back, wonderful conversation that made it sound like it was coming off the top of his head. Every word Les spoke was thought about or written down. He was that well prepared every morning. So the air, the radio air, is kind of a funny thing. It is an intangible thing where you are sharing your life with thousands and thousands of people. But it's just as though it was one person because that relationship is so close. And Les had a way of directly connecting with people, um, unlike really anything that I've ever seen. He also would talk to anybody who called in. You know, if you can imagine pe someone that's so, you know, sort of reaching out that they would call a radio station for somebody to talk to, and he never, ever said no. You know, when it comes to the business of radio and live music in this town, Les set the gold standard. Everybody knew him, he knew everybody, and he knew everything that was going on. And it didn't matter if it was exactly his type of music or not, he appreciated it. And everybody always seemed to appreciate having Les around, and that certainly is the case for me. And very few people realized that Les was, um, he loved the arts. He wanted to be an actor, and he had done a lot of training on stage at PSU. And I think in some ways that Kink was his stage. And every morning he was so aware of how he touched people's lives. And he loved that idea that he was creating in people's imagination some safe place for them to begin their morning. People are always saying how much less meant to them. And I think if I could leave folks with one thing, it would be to say how much you meant to him. The listeners were everything. And that's what I did. I graduated from University of Portland in 74 and then did theater around here for a while. Couldn't get any paid work. You know, there was nothing here that paid any money. And I was in a production at Portland Civic Theater when one of the guys I was in this production with, his name was Russ McDonald. He worked for the old Kissin on Burnside. He said to me, you know, my wife just got a job at KGON and they're looking for someone, you ought to think about doing that because I think they're paying like five bucks an hour. And I said to him, well, I, you know, I could never do that. I've never been in a radio station in my life. And I went to interview on a Thursday and I started that Sunday. And I was absolutely awful, just horrible. But it didn't matter because there weren't that many people that listened to FM back then. But the one thing I had going in my favor looking back was love of music.